Hello everyone. Um, welcome to our dandelion lesson for this week. I don't, I don't have a lot to talk about today, but I did want to um, share a new paper that I think you're really going to like and paint something fun with you that's a little bit more involved than the typical dandelion lesson. So I hope that's okay. So first about the paper. Um, I did just a really quick little landscape on it last night just to try it, and I am really liking it. Um, it's got a great, it's like toothy hot pressed finish, which I really love. So it's not smooth like a hot pressed paper, but it's not really bumpy like a cold pressed paper. It's just right in between, and I love that. It's my favorite. Um, this is actually writing paper. It's uh, stationary, and the brand is Original Crown Mill. It's pure cotton. It's 300 grams, so that's 140 pound paper. It's made in Belgium. There are 50 sheets to a pack, and I want to say it was like $12. Um, of course, these are small, so um, it's postcard size, right? But for me, I love that, and for a lot of the things we do here, that works out great. Um, it is really sturdy. It doesn't buckle. Um, the back side is smooth. The front side has texture. You could also, so you could make art on one side, flip it over, and write a postcard on the other, and send it in the mail. It's it's pretty fabulous. So I think I'll use it today for our project, so you can just sort of see how how it works. But if you would just Google original crown mill, um, you know, set of 50 pure cotton cards, you'll find it in a place that's convenient for you. It's, it's not exclusive to anyone. It's a pretty well known company. All right, so that's the paper. It's great. It's really great so far. I also did some just little, you know, swatches and stuff on it. And I really, really liked it. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Let me see if it came through. I don't know if it did or not. No, it didn't. All right, I have to stop this and do something. Well, maybe it will. I don't know. Oh, we, we don't really need it. Okay. So what I thought we'd do is, is practice painting things that are transparent. And I was thinking of wrapped candies, um, which is a really easy thing to draw, right? And a really easy thing to paint, but it it teaches you a little bit more, right, than, than some things. It teaches you about the importance of highlights and the importance of shadows, all right, and where to put them. And plus, it's just bright and cheerful. So I thought, I just thought it would be a lot of fun. So to draw them, right, what we want to do is we want to kind of make a rounded rectangle. So... I'm going to start up here for one. So a rounded rectangle, you could kind of draw an oval, right? And then you just, you just want to round off the edges, you know, so. Like so, okay? And then you want to have a big poofy kind of thing like this. I don't know what you want to call that, but you see, <laughs> it's sort of triangular and it, it fits on like that. So where the candies twist, right? And then from here, you want to pull out some lines. So like this, this, and this, and maybe one up here. And then you want to um, show where it overlaps. So just give it like a little area where like one is sticking up off the other. And then I can use my eraser to erase anything that's sort of interfering. But I mean, really we don't need to. We can, we can leave them for learning purposes. So there's my lines, right? Okay. So that's the basic candy shape. Let's let's do one more because they're all going to be a little bit different. So I'll I'll do another one right here. So kind of an oval 
or a rounded rectangle, right? And they don't need to be perfect. And then we've got this big sort of fluffy thing, like a tulle skirt <laughs> that comes off from the side. All right, and then we want to draw lines. And I'm kind of making the lines hit where things happen in the candy. See, so like down here where things happen in the wrapper. So like this is an, this little bump goes out, so I make sure that one of my points goes to that. Does that make sense? And then, and then I'm just gonna pull out a little bit where they're overlapping. That's a, that's an important part um, because they don't, you know, they don't always just line up. All right, so that's super easy, right? It's not hard. And hopefully you can see my pencil. I'm using a 2B so you could see it better. Okay, now what we have to remember on this part, because we have wrinkles in here, we're also going to have wrinkles on the wrapper itself, okay? But those are going to follow the shape of the candy. So they'll, the wrapper, you know, goes like this. So they're not going to, the wrinkles won't go this way. They'll follow the shape of the candy. So they'll be like, arched up here and arched down here or more straight across in the middle. And you can draw some little lines like that to remind you on your first try, all right? Once you get the hang of this, you don't need to draw all these lines. You'll, you'll just know when you're painting. All right, so we've got some basic drawings down. Now, what, what I think is really fun about things like this is that we can, um, we can use really bright, cheerful colors, okay? So in, for instance, I think I'll use, um, I'll make one like a, like a bright yellow. So I'm just gonna use like a, a Hansa yellow or a, a cadmium yellow hue, that's something that's super bright. And I'm gonna start with it more diluted, right? And, and I'm gonna paint the whole candy, but I, where those lines are, I'm going to paint the candy, but I'm gonna skip a little bit where those lines are. See, I'm just skipping a little bit, leaving some white here and there. Okay, we, it's really important that we leave some white. So that's the lightest value that we're painting, and we're gonna make it darker as we go, okay? But you see that? Let me just emphasize it a little bit more. Um, I can see it, but sometimes on camera, you can't see it. So I left a little bit of white, okay? Now, um, there's going to be a tiny bit of yellow happening in our wrapper, which is a reflection. So we can just take a little bit here and there and just, just put a few dots. It, it really, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Okay, just a little bit. Now for the second color, um, I think I'll do like a quinacridone rose. Okay, so my first layer, I want lots of water in it. And you can choose any colors. I'm just thinking it might be fun to do really bright colors. So same thing, all the same. I'm going to start up here at the top. All right, and then I, I want to leave white space. And the white space should follow the direction of form of the candy. So in other words, you don't want the white, the white shape going like up and down, right? And then again, we'll just, we'll put a little bit um, here and there on our wrappers. Mostly our wrappers will be gray. Okay. And the ones on the wrappers, we want it to be really pale. So we can even take a wet brush and just sort of scrub it out a little bit. Okay, this, this this color is so much darker than like a yellow, right? Okay, 
All right. Now, while this is drying for a minute, because we're going to add layers to this, okay? Let's make up a gray. So for gray, I'm going to use the first two colors that I used. I used quinacridone rose and Hansa yellows to, to make an orange. And I'm going to add some blue. The only blue, I'm going to use thalo blue, just a little touch of it. Okay, now, um, and just keep adding it until you sort of get a gray. Right now it's green. Okay, and then you can add other colors to get to your gray. And it's good when you're doing something like this, it's really good to get to your gray using colors that you've used. And we, you know, we can make gray with just about anything as long as we pull in something opposite, okay? So just make sure that whatever colors you've used here, you've also used in your gray. All right. So the gray um, is mostly going to go on the outer wrapper. We're not going to put it so much on the candy, but on the wrapper itself. And so here, where we've got a little bit, remember we took this area out, we want that to be gray. And, and just sort of model it in there and let it... Um, let it always leave a little bit of white space. We're gonna have a lot of gray here, like towards where the candy meets the wrapper. Okay. And then we're gonna have gray that comes out on these lines. So the lines that we drew. Just put them out here every now and then. Do not be too specific. Um, just be really relaxed with it, all right? And the same thing over here. It, they're, they're, we're going to have a little gray in here and gray where it meets the candy. And then gray somewhere in here where, and mostly toward the inside. Okay, very simple. And I'll do the same thing on my yellow one. So, gray where we did that little cutout. Leave some white, right? Gray here. Okay, and, we, and we'll leave the outer edge a little lighter, especially if there's no color there. We'll just I'll leave it a little lighter. And then the same thing over here. Okay, so now we feel that twistedness. This is doing this in the simplest form, the simplest form of something like a wrapped candy, okay? All right, now we're gonna start with our color again. All right, and we, we will go one step darker with our gray once that dries. All right, so let's go back to our yellow candy and I'm gonna make this yellow stronger now, okay? And then I'm gonna put I'm going to put just the tiniest hint of, of purple in there. So um, let's see, what do I have here? I have moon glow, that'll work, or shadow violet. Just the tiniest bit, or purple, any kind of purple, all right? And then I'm going to come up and I'm going to, I'm going to put some stronger color here and there. It's going to be stronger at the edges. All right, and much stronger at the bottom. 
because it will still leave a little color shining through, but stronger. Okay, like that. You don't even need to soften the edges, all right? Just make it darker like that. And then we're gonna do the same with the rose. And with rose, the opposite of red is green, so I can take something like um, just any kind of green and stick it in there. And it's just gonna make it a little bit deeper. And again, we'll go a little bit on the edges. And then definitely down at the bottom. Like that. Okay, so you can see how they're starting to take a roundness to them. All right, now let's go back to the gray. We're gonna make a darker gray, so the same thing. We could take all of these colors that we've used. We've used, so we'll put in our, our red. Let's, I'll put in a little moon glow or shadow violet. I'll put in a little phthalo blue. getting almost violet and then all that's missing is a little bit of yellow and that's going to give me a gray and then I just want to put the tiniest bit of darker gray so just at the points just a little bit here and there to emphasize right see how it just instantly It's amazing what value can do. This is a great lesson in that. Just by darkening your colors a little bit. What that can do. Okay, just a little bit. All right, now, and it's gonna be the same thing, right? Hold on one second, my, somebody's texting me. Okay, um, it's gonna be the same thing for our colors again. We're gonna go back to our yellow and make it even stronger, all right? So we'll go in and we'll add more violet to it so it gets a little bit darker. Maybe that's too... I'm going to put a little bit of red in there just to brighten it up. All right. And now we're getting, just like we did in the gray, we're getting smaller. So I'd like you to try this and see what you learn, right? See what you learn from this about, about making other things. Building these subtle layers from light to dark, accentuating the darkness. Um, let me just, now I'm going to go just a tiny bit darker on the yellow, just for the very, see, amazing. Back to our pink, adding in green. Same thing. Okay. And then once more, darker. So you get to the really darkest value just in a couple places and makes all the difference.
pretty simple, right? So I want you to try this. Do three or five of them. Do them in the colors that you love. If you were going to buy candy, which color would you buy? I'm even going to take this gray one step darker in just the teeniest little bit. bit. See? Just that little tiny bit makes all the difference. All right, so it's just a fun little project today and an introduction to a wonderful new paper that I hope that I hope you'll you'll enjoy. Um, so it, it's affordable, you know. It's cheaper than the Strathmore watercolor postcards. Um, you could take this and spray it with a fixative or with Aquanet or something and write on the back and sign it in the mail, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, and you could even add some little candies like... Let's do, um, let's do a pink, like a little M&M type thing. So you could paint a circle. And leave a little white. And then wait for it to dry and it'll gradually make this darker as well because this works for spheres too right let's do it a couple more and then we can uh, maybe lavender So you just use a really watered down version of the paint. And then you go back with a less watered down and a more, you know, and almost no watering. So here I'll go with this one and we'll just put, That one's still so wet. My gosh, yours, this paper is fabulous. I really, really like it. And then you could go one darker for each of them. Um, Is really simple. too far with that one. There. 
it was fine without it. <laughs> it was probably better without it. All right. But just showing you, you can just fill it out with it. this technique of starting light and going darker and darker can work with so many things. All right. Okay, everyone. Enjoy. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll be back next week. We're going to finish up our stone project in the Adostra tier. And then we're going to have a brand new um, project for the watercolor for uh, the watercolor project for dandelions, um, for all of you. It's going to be um, just a really pretty fresh flower uh, style of painting um, with some line and wash. Okay? All right. I will see you then. Take good care. Okay, I wanted to do a little bonus for those of you who love sparkle. So I have a couple things here. Um, this is called Stardust. It's by Colero, which is really affordable, sparkly paint. You can get them at Jet Pens. It's called Starlight or Stardust. Star, one of those. I don't know. And <coughs> I'm going to just drop some water in it. And then I've also got my Lisi Linka, and I'm just going to use the... Um, crystal silver, and I'm going to put some on the crystal rose and the gold. I don't have a yellow, so of any, any, so we'll use gold for the yellow. <coughs> you know, and I'll, I'll, we'll do the little candies too, why not? So blue, and magenta, and green. All right. So I just thought we'd do this because a lot of you like um, sparkles. I'm just gonna use this as a mixing palette and I'm, I'm just gonna show you some things that I've learned. So the one thing I've learned is that I don't like painting right from the pan. For instance, with this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wet it. These activate instantly, so you, all of them. So you don't have to let them sit, but I just like to get some water on there. And whip it around and then I transfer it so I'm sure that I'm not getting uh, thick paint ever right I don't like thick paint when I'm doing this so some people do I don't so I'm just taking I have a triple zero liner brush and I can just completely saturate my brush in it all right and then what I want to do is wherever I have pure white, okay, I wanted to take a picture of this before um, so you could see it both ways. Wherever I have pure white, I am going to put little stripes of this sparkle. So just little bits, right? Not too much. This is the star stardust or whatever. It's the clear glitter. It's super, super pale. All right, and on the candy too. Because this won't take away from the whiteness. I needed to leave a little more white on this one. I didn't. Okay, and then I'll, see? It catches the light. It's not necessary, but you know, when you when you want to feel like a little girl, which I often do. Okay, so that one, that one has the light sparkle. I can hold it up and look and say, oh yeah, that's beautiful. It's just enough and not too much, right? Okay, so to finish this one off, I'll use the gold because I don't have a yellow. I would use a gold or yellow. Whatever color it is, use the closest that you have. Again, I'm mushing it on a palette because... I want it to be nice and fluid. If I keep going back into here, I get thicker paint and I, I don't like that. 
And so I'm gonna use this, and where the medium yellow is, I'll just put a few little stripes here and there. Not, you don't want too much, that's, that's enough, okay? And it just gives it a little bit of shimmer. All right, so moving to this one, I'll use the, the crystal silver, just to show the difference. There is a difference, for sure. This one has different size particles and it's more transparent. This one is definitely finer and more silver. And the same on the candy part. It'll just, it's just going to look a little different. I, I'm experimenting. I just want to see. Okay. Looks great. All right. And then I'll do a little bit more on this side. And again, I'm only putting a tiny bit where I left it white. I'm not, um, I'm not overdoing it, right? Just a little bit is what makes it effective. If you put too much, it starts, it, it takes on a whole different appearance. So I just like the tiniest bit of magic. Let me see. Do I want more? A little bit more. Okay, all right, and then I'll go for the pink. And I'll just, again, in here, it's not really the right pink, but it'll work. It'd be nice to have a more quinacridone goldish pink. And remember, I'm going in the lighter areas of pink. where light would hit it, and that's it. Very pretty, just a little bit of a sugar glaze, right? So pretty. Now, honestly, this starlight is brighter. It's like, it's more shimmery than even the Lisi Linka. Um, I don't know which I like better. I like the subtleness of this because it's like diamond dust. I don't know, it's just, they're all beautiful. I can't choose. All right, so here, I'm gonna go to this one Grab a little bit, make a nice glaze with it, all right? And I'm gonna paint the whole thing with a glaze of it. So it's not the whole color, but it's just like a glaze of shimmer on the whole thing. And then I'll do the green and the same. Then I just wash my lid out. Um, I don't like to keep it like that, but. The lightest little shimmer of that. I probably should have left the white center clear. And then the blue. You don't want it to really show up, so just add water until it becomes transparent. And I'm just gonna try to stay away from that white. Okay, and now these will lightly shimmer when they dry. So just a different, different effect that you can do. But the biggest takeaway for me is to use a long, narrow brush like this, a liner brush, very, very thin, and to take, not to keep taking your paint from here, but to move it to another surface so you can keep it fluid. That's, that's how I like it. Um, even more fun. All right, everybody. See you soon. Take care.